after noting the types we need to know what are the models for decision making there you have classical rationality model what max weber long back said laying emphasis on rationality as such there the purest form of public administration is pub, you know the rational approach there or the other way around the most rational way one can look at an organization is public organization that is one type of approach there all decisions have to be taken by rational organizations there another explanation for this is that say one has to take rational decision based on available facts and figures there rational model expects the following five steps one is that is say identification and analysis of a problem in the context of goals and objectives of a government any democratically elected government then conceptualization of alternatives and collection of relevant information for example if you want to increase the enrollment in higher education institutions in the next 20 years what is the basis on which we are basing our decisions on for instance common sense suggests that say we should know how many are in the age group of 17 to 24 that age group which is eligible to join higher education system then choosing the best course of action or alternative that would bring the best results again let me continue the old example like if you want to increase the enrollment from 16 to 25% there how many colleges do you require course mix distance mode versus conventional mode etc and how many we are expecting people to study through e learning this we can arrive at this decision on based on number of factors then we'll start implementation of the decision by opening up of many colleges universities and then after 2 years we will be evaluating how conventional systems achieved their objectives how many they have enrolled these are the five steps that are generally followed by all to explain what is called the rational approach to the analysis of decision making there is an assumption here that all the above steps are simple to follow and that administrator is bound to have all the relevant knowledge and sure shot prediction of success by choosing the best course of action which is called the decision there in reality the process of quite uh, i mean in reality the process is quite complex and not as simple as mentioned just now by me as there are many unforeseen factors that might crop up in the process of even to take a decision this classical approach of decision making was the basis for building up of behavioralist school and the idea of studying decision making in detail emerged from the above mentioned team there simon put forward this alternative model to the classical economic rationality model which he believed was comparatively a more realistic alternative in this model of decision making he proposes the model of administrative man rather than economic man while making decisions in an organization it states that there are limitations of human capacity in formulating and solving problems that arise from a number of internal and external factors hence one best solution or complete rational choice of decision can never be achieved so the administration makes a satisfying decision instead of maximizing decision there hence one best solution or complete rational choice of decision can never be achieved so the administration makes a satisfying decision instead of maximizing decision there simon presented his model through six types of rationality a student of public administration must necessarily know what are these six types these include subjective a decision is subjectively rational if the decision maximizes attainment when compared to the knowledge of the subject that the administrator has objective 
decision is objectively rational where it is correct behavior for maximizing given values in a given situation. Third, conscious, a decision is consciously rational where adjustment of means, methods, equipments, funds are used to achieve an end objective goal to the ends like end result, objective or goal is a conscious and planned process or goals there. And it is deliberate, the fourth stage in the bounded rationality model. Decision is deliberately rational if the adjustment of means to ends has been deliberately sought. Fifth is personal, decision is personally rational if the decision is directed to the individual's goals and it is organizational, decision is organizationally rational to the extent that it is aimed at the organizational goals. Simon's behavioral schools perspective, we have covered the bounded rationality. There are two more. These two are individual choice model and fact value dichotomy. The individual decision choice model has three stages. Intelligence activity stage, the design stage and the choice stage there. A detailed explanation of these three stages follows now. As far as intelligence activity stage is concerned, Simon called the first phase of decision making process as intelligence. It involves finding occasions for decision making. The head of the organization after studying the organizational environment identified the problem to be solved and gives it the needed recognition so that the whole organization is aware of and aware of the uh, aware of it and proceeds to its next step of resolution there what is the design activity searching for alternatives once a problem is identified like for instance why the children are not going to the school the head of organization begins to search for possible and suitable courses or strategies or alternatives of action that could help resolve the issue in the best possible manner leading to positive and beneficial results for the organization and for those who look for some kind of a solution. We go through the merits and demerits of each of these alternatives like diet schools, like DP, DP schools, alternative schools and goes through the merits and demerits of each of these alternatives and how they would work with regard to the issue and how we can expect the results there. What is bounded rationality model then? This is choice activity. Once the alternatives have been developed, the administration proceeds to the choice activity stage, which critically evaluates different consequences. After the above mentioned stages are completed, the decision is taken, which seems most appropriate and can fulfill objectives of the organization there. This stage requires certain skills like judgment, creativity, quantitative analysis, and experience in the decision making process. Let me tell you, the choice activity stage really calls for skill like judgment among different alternatives, a kind of a creativity. I was telling you why children are not going to the school. Apart from devising new curriculum there, there must be a kind of a creative approach to the design of the syllabus itself and again quantitative analysis and experience in the decision making process. As I told you earlier, after the bounded rationality model and the individual choice decision making model, the last aspect in the behavioral approach to decision making model of Herbert Simon is fact value dichotomy. Simon in his writings stated that every decision comprises of a logical combination of fact and value. If one has to give meaning as to what is a fact, examples now. Fact is a proven example. And what do you mean by value? Value is like you know, somebody is beautiful, somebody is ugly, somebody is good, somebody is bad, somebody is great, somebody is less. These distinctions wherever we make there, these are value loaded statements there. These need to be taken into consideration when we are looking at the decision making processes especially when we are analyzing what are the factors behind a decision making, we need to keep in mind the fact and the value distinction as such there, according to Herbert Simon. 
as we have noted simon's three approaches to the decision making model under the behavioral school like uh, the fact value the individual choice and the bounded rationality model there are also others who have contributed for understanding of decision making model in fact contributions from lindblom edgioni have further enriched the understanding of the concept of decision making in the theory and practice of public administration there let us now try to know something more about others contribution to this area especially edgioni drawer and others he was quite critical of herbert simon's approach and advocated that instead of changing the whole area where the issue arises small and partial adjustments should be made mutually which will then pass on gradually and without any conflict to the whole bit by bit that is incrementally if a decision is taken all of a sudden it might be opposed as people would find it hard to adjust he calls it in his paper art of muddling through that instead of rationalism approach of incrementalism is the best way since a public policy is is mostly a continuation of previous policy or a better version of it and bears a strong resemblance to its predecessor and so little by little changes are required since the base more or less is the same i was referring to two public policies here one is elimination of poverty two is attracting children back to the school in these two policy makers tried to put in place such decisions which will incrementally improve the implementation process there so the basic idea of the incrementalist approach is to convince the different clientele groups for acceptance by public and legitimacy and is and of course in a total perspective let me repeat the idea of the incremental approach was basically acceptance by public and legitimacy yet another thinker in this area is edgioni who hit upon the idea of blended rationality or who coined new concept called blended rationality and the model that he proposed in this is mixed scanning model of decision making while supporting lindblom's incrementalist theory he broadly did not agree with him on the rationality aspect of it he was of the view that in the beginning of the whole problem area we need to see broadly and then later on focus may be made for detailed scrutiny of the smaller area requiring urgent attention because unless the whole area is taken into a perspective we cannot possibly arrive at a solution that can be implemented in various steps there when it comes to drawer's optimum model of decision making or optimal model drawer first of all criticized lindblom's approach as he felt that partial change as a solution to a problem is not possible as the inertia of the previous problem or the bigger problem will still persist and eat up with small and significant changes he suggested a combination of rational factors as well as extra rational factors and linked with the decision making situation he suggested a qualitative approach and through a feedback mechanism he was also in support of studying decision making as a subject of social science and making it interdisciplinary where knowledge and techniques from other social sciences can be mixed and applied to decision making to broaden its scope and achieve maximum results so this discussion comes to close with the following observations there what is a decision making and what it means to the governments and to the general public how decisions are made and what are the processes involved in decision making and the types of decision making the models of decision making emerging models that deserve the attention of students of public administration the debates in this the criticism of each model there and we will be closing this discussion with one observation that all decisions are subject to number of political social and cultural context in addition to historical context there there is a vast varying of these aspects on the entire decision making model as such there for more information 
and for greater clarity, you are advised to consult our e-text and also refer to the web resources that are available extensively on this topic there.